So hi there, wonderful Astro person. Welcome back to the Astro Forum channel and thanks for tuning in. In this particular video, I just wanted to share my first attempt with you to actually capture a galaxy. And I'm going after the Whirlpool Galaxy. It's a really beautiful galaxy. And actually this is also the reason why I bought the Edge HD 8 inch telescope. Um, because it has a longer focal length and a bigger aperture, I'm really hoping to get uh, a more zoomed in picture and also a higher resolution picture of some of the galaxies that are out there in our universe. And yeah, let me just show you the setup that I'm using. So let me quickly show you my setup. You might have seen it before when you watched other videos, but I'm still working with the 0.7 reducer, uh, which gives me a focal length of, of about 1500 millimeters. Uh, and an F ratio of F7, of course. Uh, I have the correct back focus here and also an eight position electronic filter wheel, a ZWO uh, filter wheel with narrow band and broad band uh, filters. And I'm still working with the ASI 1600 Mono Pro. This has been my uh, workhorse for more than two years now and I'm still pretty satisfied with the pictures uh, it produces. And let me also show you my guide scope because that is pretty interesting. So I also wanted to show you the guide scope here because this might come as a surprise. I'm still using a very short 50 millimeter Orion guide scope. It has a focal length of 162 millimeters. And this is the uh, ZWO 120 uh, color camera. I'm using that still for guiding. And normally you would say, hey, uh, you need a longer focal length guide scope, or even you have to get into off axis guiding, especially at a focal length of 1500 millimeters. <laughs> but I have been testing this little guide scope out uh, for several nights and I'm consistently getting yeah, round stars or close to round stars at uh, three to five minute exposures even. So now I'm really on the fence. Uh, um, should I replace this uh, little tiny guide scope that I'm using actually for refractors? Uh, should I replace it with a longer focal length guide scope or get into off axis guiding? When at the same time I'm getting pretty accurate round stars. Well, uh, let me show you some of the results I got from the Whirlpool Galaxy. So hi folks, we are here in PixInsight. Before showing you the results of the Whirlpool Galaxy, I wanted to show you two other things as well. The first thing is this. Yeah, obviously this is a, a picture of the half moon, <laughs> but I want to thank you for part participating in my live sessions on YouTube lately. I had a lot of fun. I had one lunar live session and one deep sky live session. And yeah, about 70 or 80 people were uh, continuously online and you asked me all kinds of questions about astrophotography. I tried to answer them as best as I could and I just wanted to let you know I really enjoyed those sessions because it gives me the opportunity to talk to you and please leave a comment if you liked it as well so I know that in the future um, I, I will try actually to increase the number of live sessions. Um, anyway I also wanted to show you the picture uh, I came up with during one of the live sessions. Uh, so this is the, yeah, obviously the, the half moon. But I was pretty surprised to see that, yeah, although I don't think it's the best picture I ever took of the moon, I was pretty surprised to see the details on the crater. So I was pretty happy with that. And also here the mountain ranges I included in the picture. So I think this is Montes Apenninus, right? <laughs> I really have to study up on my, uh, on my lunar knowledge. Um, yeah, but anyway, I really like the picture as well. So if you like those live sessions, please let me know in the comment section. Um, the second thing I wanted to show you is this. So I'm here at the website, theskylife.com. And if you look at asteroid information, you can see that uh, asteroid Vesta is currently at a magnitude of six. And this is a really good time. If you ever wanted to image Vesta, 
uh, this is probably about the best time to do that. And yeah, of course, Vesta is a pretty small asteroid, although it is the second largest asteroid in our solar system. It has a diameter of 500 kilometers. I think this, this, this is about 300 miles, um, US miles, I think. Um, but anyway, it will appear as a very small uh, yeah, dot actually in your picture. But what you can do is you can try to create a timeless video. So that was uh, what I, I was going after actually. So here, this is a folder where I put all of my pictures of Comet Vesta. I tracked it for about two and a half hours and I ended up with 298 pictures of Comet Vesta, 30 second pictures each. And I just tried to create a, a time-lapse video of Vesta moving across my field of view. So let's now continue with the Whirlpool Galaxy. And I just wanted to make it a little bit interesting for you. So I first wanted to show you this picture. Let me put it in the middle here. So this picture is a picture of the Whirlpool Galaxy, obviously, I took last year. And I took this picture with my refractor. So my refractor has a focal length of 480 millimeters and an aperture of 80. And yeah, I know that last year I was pretty happy with this result, but when you zoom in on the Whirlpool Galaxy, you can clearly see that uh, um, yeah, if you look at the spiral arms, uh, particularly of the Whirlpool Galaxy, I'm just missing uh, the details, the resolution here um, to really clearly see uh, the, de the details actually of the, of the spiral arms. So this is actually one of the main reasons, and let me just put this picture over here so we can compare it. This is actually one of the main reasons why I bought the Edge HD in the first place. Uh, I bought it because I wanted to also be able to capture more details, more uh, higher resolution images of some of the smaller objects, some of the smaller galaxies that are out there in our own universe. So um, let me show you the RGB data. So I have red, green and blue filtered pictures, of course. Um, and this is my first stack. Let's see, um, let's put them together. So this is my first stack. This is the, the red uh, stack. And what I ended up doing is uh, um, I took five minute exposures of the Whirlpool Galaxy. Um, and this is about two hours of data. So these, these are 24 uh, pictures, five minute exposures each stacked together. And I, you, as you can see, I'm dealing with a lot of light pollution because I'm at the city center of Utrecht uh, and I have a Bortel class of seven or sometimes even eight, depending on, uh, <laughs> on the neighbors. Um, but anyway, I was pretty happy to see the details in the spiral arms of the Whirlpool Galaxy. I was pretty surprised. You can clearly see that uh, I got a lot more details out of this picture as compared to my refractor picture last year. So this is really, I was already happy to see that yeah, this is one of the main reasons why I bought the telescope and it's doing a good job basically. And the second thing I wanted to show you is that when you look at the stars, so I told you earlier about the guide scope. Um, it has a, I have this little guide scope where at a focal length of 162 millimeters. But when you look at the stars of these five minute exposures, um, yeah, although they are not perfect, they are pretty round. So this is why I am actually on the fence of buying a, uh, about buying a new guide uh, scope because I'm already getting some decent guiding results with that small re small refractor guide scope. Um, anyway, so of course I also stacked, uh, this is the blue stack uh, of the blue filter. Again, five minute exposure. So this is about two hours of data. And yeah, again, you can clearly see the Whirlpool Galaxy, a lot of detail in the Whirlpool Galaxy. And also I took of course, pictures in the, with a the green filter. Nah, same uh, outcome more or less. So I was really happy to see that. Um, and then also I took some H alpha pictures to bring out the hydrogen alpha. Um, yeah, actually these are um, nebulae uh, star formation clusters within the Whirlpool galaxy. You can bring them out using your H alpha filter. So you can clearly see them here. I only took about 15 pictures, 15 five minute pictures uh, of the Whirlpool Galaxy. And uh, guys, I had a lot of trouble stacking these uh, pictures together. 
um, and regi registering these pictures in PixInsight. And what I ended up doing is actually I reverted to Deep Sky Stacker to stack these particular yeah, H-Alpha pictures together. And Deep Sky Stacker didn't give me any trouble whatsoever. It just stacked the data right away. <laughs> so that's pretty interesting. Um, so yeah, my final result is actually this. So, um, can I put them together? So I had to deal with a lot of light pollution. So I, uh, yeah, I, I will not go through all of the, 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 uh, the steps I went through to get this picture. Um, but yeah, obviously I did some dynamic background extraction. I did some ACDNR. Um, all to uh, actually to get to get a little bit of a, of a neutral background and to deal with the light pollution and but anyway um, I will save that for another video so when we compare then the two pictures uh, you can clearly see that um, I have a lot of details in the spiral arms of the Whirlpool Galaxy like I, I told you before and I was really happy with the results and when you look uh, carefully, you can also see some of the smaller galaxies uh, in the background of the picture. Um, so that's pretty interesting. I'm going to find out how far away these galaxies are as well. Um, and yeah, I of, of course, I try to integrate the H alpha also in the RGB picture. And I think I need a little bit more data on the H alpha because you can see I have some spots of uh, red here. So these are actually star formation regions, I would say, within the Whirlpool Galaxy. So pretty neat to see those as well. But I think when I take some more H alpha data, these uh, uh, regions can become more prominent in my picture. Anyway, um, yeah, this is all I got, folks. So I hope you found this information useful. And uh, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.